He was the last person I expected to see when my eyes finally landed on the face of my kidnapper. I was still a bit dizzy from whatever they had given me last night, so it took me more time than usual to register the face of the person standing in front of me, but those dark eyes I had spent days admiring were hard to miss. It was really Aiden, one of the very few people I trusted in my life, and the only person who had betrayed that trust. I could still not believe if this nightmare of a situation was true or not, but there he was, Aiden, looking at me with the saddest look on his face, forcing me to face the harsh reality of the situation. I had actually been kidnapped by Aiden, the one guy who was supposed to keep me safe, the one guy I trusted with my life. What the hell is all this, Aiden? I shouted at him, pointing my tied up hands in his direction. He looked at me again with those sad eyes as he muttered in his weakest voice, Isaac, I... He looked like he was fumbling to even form the words, of course, he was. What could he even say? I'm just, I'm sorry, he managed to mutter and got up to leave. Wait, where are you going? You didn't answer me yet, I said as panic overtook me. As much as I hated Aiden at that moment, his presence in this shady room was the only thing I could make sense of and now he was leaving. Aiden, I shouted again, but he had already gone, leaving me alone in this small dark room. The room reminded me of all those crime movies I had spent nights watching. I even shared one or two with Aiden, who would laugh at how such things didn't happen in real life, and if they did, he'd always be there to protect me. After all, my father especially hired him for that, right? But here we were. Aiden had abandoned me here in this dingy room where the air was stale and the light barely reached the corners. Sitting here with my hands all tied up, I couldn't help but think about the events of last night. Flashback, the previous night. What's the matter, Aiden? Why did we stop? I asked as Aiden brought the car to a halt in a very dimly lit alleyway. We were going back home after a crazy party at my friend's penthouse. I was sort of wasted, but I had nothing to worry about since Aiden was with me. I think there's something wrong with the car, he said, making his way out of the driver's seat while I just leaned back and relaxed. Aiden had been my bodyguard for years. He had handled things far worse than this, so a broken down car in a dark alley were nothing he couldn't take care of. So I just relaxed in the back seat while Aiden stood there in front of the car fiddling with things inside the bonnet. A few minutes passed and I didn't know what was taking him so long. Bored out of my mind, I finally decided to go out and see what was happening for myself. As I made my way toward him, I found him just standing there looking down at the tangled wires inside the open bonnet. What is all this mess? Did you not fix it? I stumbled upon my words, the alcohol taking its toll. But Aiden just stood there staring at me with a look I couldn't quite comprehend. I was confused as we stood there for a minute, Aiden still staring at me before he broke the silence with a soft whisper. I am sorry. What are you- Before I could ask him what he meant, half of my face was covered with some cloth. An overwhelming smell took over me and everything went black. Flashback ends, the present time. It has been an hour, I guess, since Aiden left me here alone in this room, and all I could do was take in my surroundings. It wasn't much, just damp walls, a small circular hole in the name of a window, and the stupid iron door that Aiden went out of. I had spent the last half an hour trying to get this door to open, and when nothing worked, I spent all my energy banging the door as if my life depended on it. Just as I was busy banging at the door, I heard keys rattling outside. I just stopped instantly hoping Aiden was back, but as the door opened, I could see a tall, robust guy entered, and by the look on his face, he was not pleased. Keep it down, you shithead, he shouted at me as he filled the tiny room with his overwhelming presence. I stepped back a bit, but I was not giving up. Just let me go, I said as I tried to make a dash for the door. I know that was stupid, because the big guy wasted no time before grabbing me and shoving me back. It seemed like a simple push for him, but my body crashed into the floor with such force that I felt like I might have broken my arm. Hey, 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 take it easy, man, Aiden said as he rushed inside the room and stood between me and this stupidly violent guy. Of course, now Aiden was here. Where was he just five minutes back when the guy shoved me toward the wall like I was some rag doll? The boss is calling you. I can handle him, Aiden told the big guy who just smirked and told him to be careful with me. As the big man left, Aiden came to me with a concerned look. Are you okay? I don't need to be saved by a backstabber like you, I shouted at Aiden lightly, pushing him back. The look on his face clearly showed how hurt he was, but I didn't care. I mean, 
I was hurt as well. I trusted him for God's sake, and what did he do? He took advantage of that trust, and now I was here. Why was I even here? That thought had struck me so many times since I woke up in this stupid room, but I still didn't know. Isaac, let me, he said, offering me his hand to get up, but obviously I cut him off. Drop the act, Aiden. Both you and me know it's all fake. Is this why you came back for work so you could bring me here? The words left my mouth more sharply than I intended. Yes, Aiden had been my bodyguard for years, but he left the job a few months back. I was pretty upset by it since I loved his presence around me. I mean, yeah, by the looks of it, he looks like a tough guy, but at the same time, he's also this kind and caring man, and with his shy personality, I couldn't help but be drawn towards him over the years. But it never got to anything more than that since Aiden left the job, and he only came back just a few weeks ago. I thought it to be the best thing, but the situation I am in right now shows how wrong I was. Maybe it could have been something, but it's all in the past now, because right now, I hated Aiden with all my heart. I'm sorry, Isaac, I really am, Aiden said, his voice cutting through my thoughts and pulling me back to the present. This is all you say? But when I ask you about anything else, you just leave. It's as easy as that, right? It's not easy at all. You you don't understand, he said, in almost a murmur. Then make me. I was desperate now, and for the first time since yesterday, I was not shouting at him. I can't. That's all he said before taking a seat in front of me. This brought back all the anger that I tried to calm down. Like, what the hell was even happening? So, for the next few minutes, I let it all out on him. All my anger, all my frustration, while Aiden just sat there quietly looking at me his eyes soft in the gentlest way. After finally getting tired of all the shouting and Aiden not budging, I gave up and sat there looking at the calm guy sitting in front of me. Looking at his melancholy face and those dark, beautiful eyes of his, I couldn't help but think about all those car rides I spent staring at those eyes in the car's rearview mirror. His eyes were honestly one of the best features of his face, especially the way they shined. When he smiled that shy little smile, Wait a second, I'm not supposed to think about all this right now. I'm supposed to hate this guy who got me kidnapped, right? The next night. Why have you not been eating at all? Aiden asked me, clearly frustrated as he made his way inside my dingy room. What do you care? I asked, shooting him one of my nastiest glares as I added. You do not care when I ask you to tell me what the hell is going on. Come on, Isaac, quit it. Now is not the time for taunts. You can't starve yourself, silly. Yeah? Watch me, I retorted. Oh, please, enough with the stubbornness. You gotta eat, he said again, his voice firmer now, almost as if he was commanding me. I'd rather starve than eat this crap you call food. As soon as the words left my mouth, Aiden's eyes suddenly went soft. The assertiveness in them that was there just a second ago was nowhere to be seen, but no one could prepare me for what was coming next. Aiden made his way to me, a determined look on his face, and with each step he took, I couldn't help the nervousness creeping up inside my body. It's been years since I have known him, and there have been several times when he was pretty close to me, especially the time when I fell in the shower and Aiden didn't even hesitate for a second before picking up my wet, dripping body effortlessly in his strong arms, his dark but soft eyes on me at all times while I couldn't help but blush. And now, even after all these times, the thought of Aiden being so close to me still stirred a flutter of nervousness excitement in my heart. Before I could even make sense of the crazy thoughts racing through my mind, Aiden scooped me up in his arms and tossed me over his shoulder, leaving me to face his back. Oi, what the hell are you doing? Was the only thing I could say as I struggled against his ripped body trying to make sense of whatever the hell was happening. Just shush and stop moving, silly, Aiden said, the authority back in his voice. He had called me silly, again, and for reasons I couldn't explain as opposed to how I should have been offended by it. It just warmed my heart. I mean, I could feel some sort of lingering affection in his words, but then again, I could be wrong, right? I mean, I trusted him and looked at where it landed me. Even in all my confusion and the struggle against Aiden's strong body, who was I to deny him when he was being so irresistibly commanding? So, I just hung there, struggling quietly over his shoulder as Aiden made his way out of the room and somewhere into the dark, moonlit light. For minutes, he just walked while I wobbled slightly, my gaze fixed on the chiseled, flexing muscles of his back while stretched through the fabric of his shirt. Soon, he came to a stop and finally brought me down from his shoulders to what seemed to be a countertop. Where are we? I asked, 
taking in the dark surroundings of what looked like a makeshift kitchen. What does it look like, genius, he said, a smirk plastered on his face. But why the hell are we here? Just sit quietly, okay? You'll know. He replied as he started bustling around the kitchen while I just observed him quietly. Soon enough, to my surprise, he presented a grilled cheese sandwich to me. He knew it was my favorite, so I was a bit taken aback by this gesture. I mean, why is he being so sweet to me as if he's the one who helped me get kidnapped? What? I tried to ask before he cut me off. Grilled cheese, your favorite, so you don't have to eat that crap. But just don't starve yourself, okay, silly? He said in the softest voice. I was touched, all my hatred for him melting in that moment. Aiden still cared about me, but how could I move on from the fact that he was also the guy who betrayed me? Why are you doing all this? I asked, hoping that he might open up. I mean, I couldn't be the only one overpowered by all these confusing feelings, right? But Aiden stayed quiet. Just eat up, Isaac, was all he said, and it just made me mad at him again. How am I supposed to eat like this, genius? I retorted, pointing to my tied-up hands, using his own sarcasm against him. He just made his way towards me, the softness back in his eyes. Oh, I'm sorry, he said, his voice tinged with concern as he touched my wrist. I flinched. The ropes have left painful deep cuts that throbbed with every slight movement. And then, just as surprisingly, he grabbed the sandwich from the plate and brought it to my mouth. I was shocked, but also hungry, and too tired to argue with him anymore, so... I complied with him and took a bite. It was the best grilled cheese I had ever had, or maybe I was just too hungry. Thank you, Aiden, I said in a soft whisper when he had finished feeding me the sandwich, his thumb gently brushing the crumbs off my lower lip. I could feel a slight shiver running through my entire body at his touch as my cheeks reddened and I looked into Aiden's soft but sad eyes telling me of an unspoken apology. As soon as we were back in my dingy room, where Aiden left me after carefully sitting me up on the hard floor, as I sat there alone, I couldn't help but think how gentle Aiden was with me. Was it possible that he also felt this unspoken connection? Because I sure as hell wasn't denying it anymore. As silly as it sounds, I think I was falling for the one guy I was supposed to hate, and it was driving me crazy. The next morning, I woke up with a sore back to the sound of keys rattling outside the iron door. Soon the door opened and Aiden made his way inside, with a bottle in his hand. I was confused about what it was until Aiden held my hands without a word and started applying the lotion sort of thing on my wrist. He must have read the confusion on my face as he replied, It's an ointment for your cuts. They would heal faster with this. I couldn't help but smile at him. He had remembered this little detail from last night. He definitely cared more than he showed, or else why would he be taking care of my wounds? He was even more gentle every time I flinched because of the sharp pain. This was my chance. I had to ask him, so I did. Aiden, please tell me why am I here. I am seriously losing my mind about it. I just... I just... He tried to speak, maybe to deny me the explanation again as I could see his eyes turning sad. Please, I need to know the truth. No ifs and buts this time. I know you care about me and don't want me here, so please tell me. What do they want from me? Is it because of the money? I pleaded with him, my eyes holding his. Okay, I'll tell you, he said, and though it was nothing much, it felt like a victory. My eyes urged to go on. It's not about the money, it's because of your debt. Aiden was just about to tell me, but he was cut off because of the arrival of the big guy from before. Hey, new guy, out of here. The boss is coming to see this little shithead, the big man said to Aiden. As Aiden got up, I saw his hands curling up into fists on either side of his body. Was Aiden angry at the idea of the boss seeing me? Whatever it was, Aiden left without a word as a portly middle-aged man made his way into the room, his presence filling the whole room with a weird sort of negativity. So, this wimp is the son of the renowned commissioner of police. What a joke, the boss man said as soon as he saw me and laughed that annoying laugh of his. How much do you think your dad loves you, you poor piece of crap? Enough to find you and beat your ass, I guess, I retorted, not letting him or his big man scare me away. Arrogance isn't gonna help you, boy. You should be worried about what happens if your dad doesn't listen to us, he said, that creepy smirk hanging on his lips like he was getting a kick out of the whole thing. What do you mean, I said, getting a little scared by the second? I really wanted Aiden here. His presence would have helped me. I knew he would have made sure that this psycho man didn't hurt me in any way, but he was nowhere to be seen. 
It was just me, the boss man, and the big guy, whom I assume was his right-hand man. So, your dad has something. More like someone we want. One of our mates, and he's given us a hard time releasing him out of prison, so it seems perfectly fair to have someone he values the same. Now let's just see if he loves his own son enough to mend his ways for you. My dad would never let a criminal free no matter what, I replied. Well, that's too bad for you, isn't it? Your own bodyguard betrayed you, and now your own father doesn't want to save you. Poor little man, the guy said with fake pity in his voice. Just shut up, I tried to shut the thoughts out. He was starting to get to me. Don't want the truth? Okay, but I'm just here to tell you. Your dad only has a week before we start taking things more seriously. So try and not to make this too difficult for us, or all of this would end sooner than a week. With this, he just left as swiftly as he came, the big guy after him smiling a nasty sneer. As soon as they were out, Aiden came in rushing like he had just been waiting outside for the two to leave, so he hadn't left me alone after all. This guy. How could I not fall for him? Hey, are you okay? What did he say, he said, sitting in front of me, concern written all over his face. He told me the reason why I'm here, I said, too tired to say anything else. Oh, are you okay, Isaac, he said, reaching for my hand, holding it in the gentlest of ways. I am now, I told him, squeezing his hand in reassurance, a little smile forming on both of our lips. I will get you out of here safely, I promise, he said, his eyes locking mine so I could see the genuineness in them. I was surprised by this sudden declaration, yet I said, Okay. Even after all that we had been through, I believed him, and I was now more than sure than ever that I was crazily, irrevocably, and deeply in love with my bodyguard turned kidnapper. But I wasn't going to tell him that. Not here. Not yet. Three days later. For the past few days, both me and Aiden had settled into a type of pattern. He used to come and try to give me company whenever he could without making anyone suspicious. At night, he used to sneak me out of the makeshift kitchen and make me something good each night just so I kept myself full and did not have to eat the crap that the goons served. I started to feel safe around him again, though most of the time he was quiet and did not speak much. I tried to ask him how he got involved in the whole kidnapping, but he never answered and just went quiet. Whenever the topic came, except for the fact that he got mixed up with the wrong sort of crowd, it was like the topic was sensitive for him, so I let it be. I was happy with the chances I got with him, and with each moment I shared with him, I couldn't help but admire how gentle he was with me. A lot was happening, including our failed attempt to run away that night. Oh my god, that was a close call, Aiden said as he rushed me back into my room. Yeah, you're risking a lot for me, Aiden. They might hurt you if they found out, I said worried. It was true. He was taking a big risk trying to get me out of here, which might get him into trouble. Don't worry, I know what I'm doing, he assured me, and I couldn't help but nod. Now rest up, let me arrange for something else, and then let's try again, okay? He said, giving me a slight smile. Okay, I said. I mean, what else could I do but rely on him like I had done all these years? The next night. It might have been around 2 or 3 in the night when Aiden woke me from my sleep telling me to come with him. I didn't know the exact time, but I had been asleep for some time now, so I just assumed. I thought it was another one of our kitchen adventures, so I just got up as Aiden held my hand and started guiding me out. It took me some time to realize we were not going to the kitchen as we kept on walking far too long than usual until we finally reached a wall. I need you to jump over this wall, he said, and just like that, I was completely awake. This was a high wall. Jumping over it could cause a few broken bones at the least. Have you gone crazy? There's no way I'm jumping over this damn thing, I exclaimed. Come on, we don't have long. You need to jump now, he said, looking around in urgency. No thanks, I'd like my body intact as it is, I stayed firm on my decision. Oh, for God's sake, Isaac, do you trust me or not? He asked, his eyes serious as he gave his hand to me for support. Well, it was not a debate anymore, was it? I trusted him with my life all these years and I trusted him now in this moment more than ever. So without a word, I took his hand and prayed that I make it to the other side safe. Well, there was no reason to worry because I landed on a freaking mattress. Of course Aiden had thought it through. Silly me for doubting his plan like that. Within seconds, I heard another thud on a mattress as Aiden had made it to the other side of the wall. He found my hand in the darkness and both of us started running for our lives. He had done it. He had got me out of there and I couldn't help but feel grateful for the handsome man running hand in hand by my side. 
I guess I could get used to this. Not the running bit, just him being by my side. Half an hour later. We had been running for the last 30 minutes, only stopping to catch our breaths when Aiden finally brought me to a stop near an abandoned shed. Why are we stopping? Are you tired? I said breathless from the little sprint we just had. No, we're not stopping. Only I am. You need to go on until you reach the main road and find a taxi waiting to take you back to your dad, okay? He said, still slightly panting from all the running. What do you mean? Are you not going to come with me? I asked all confused. This is where we got to part, Isaac. You do understand that, right? He said, looking into my eyes with that soft intensity. No, I don't understand it. Why can't you come with me? I argued, my voice getting a little higher. Because I got other things to take care of. Don't worry. Just get on the main road and you'll be safe. It's not my safety I'm worried about, you idiot. I said, letting my emotions take the best of me. Did he really think this was about me? Then what is it? Why are you acting this way? He looked at me, clearly confused. You don't understand, do you? I was getting annoyed now. Understand what? I told you I'd get you out, and now you're out, so go on, he said like it was the only logical thing to do. But I'm not going to leave you here. You have to come with me. I just told you I can't, Aiden said, his tone firm. Then I'm not going as well. Either we go together or we both stay, I told him, holding his hand again. Why are you making this difficult, Isaac? Just go on and be safe, he said in the same commanding way. I told you I'm not leaving without you, I repeated. But why, he said clearly out of patience now. Because I love you, you idiot, I finally confessed. I love you and I can't let you go like this, I said yet again, relieved that it was all out. But, he tried to say as I cut him off, there's no but, I'm not leaving without you. Please come with me, Aiden, I said pleading with my eyes. I can't, even if I wanted to. I was about to argue when he said, Okay, I know you're stubborn and would not take no for an answer, so I'll make you a deal. You go on right now, and I'll find you in a few days. Then we can talk about whatever this is, okay? You promise? I asked him hopeful. I promise. Now go on, Isaac. You can't be more late, he said as he dropped my hand. I stepped away with tears in my eyes, only after placing a soft kiss on his forehead. I'll wait for you, I said before moving forward to the road. A few days later. It had been a few days since I parted ways with Aiden, though it all seemed like my old life with my dad in search of the gang and me having all the extra security after the fiasco, nothing felt the same. I missed Aiden and his long absence started to bother me. I couldn't help but think I had lost him forever. What if he had just promised to find me back just so he could make me leave? I mean, he didn't exactly seem thrilled when I told him about my feelings. He rather seemed worried. What if it was all just one-sided and Aiden didn't want to deal with my messed up feelings? All these what-ifs filled my mind and I found it hard to focus on anything but Aiden, which led me to one of the stupidest decisions I might have made. So I decided to go back to the shed Aiden left me just to look for him. I mean, if he wouldn't find me, then maybe I should find him. I just can't let him go. Later that evening. I can't believe I thought going back to the shed would be a good idea. How thick does one have to be to end up running away again from the same gang who had already kidnapped them once? I went to find Aiden near the shed but instead found the gang lurking in the bushes trying to catch me or Aiden. Well, luckily for them, I just walked right into their trap. And now I was being chased by them. I thought I had lost them a few yards back until someone grabbed me from behind. The memories of me getting kidnapped rushing back into my mind. God, no, this can't be happening. Not again. A few minutes later, whoever this person was had pulled me into a dark corner that didn't seem to be big enough for two people to stand as I was literally just inches away from his face, my eyes still adjusting to the dark with only a stream of light coming into the corner. When I looked at his face, I was struck shock. It was not the kidnappers, it was Aiden. My Aiden, standing there with an angry look on his face. Wait, why was he angry? Are you seriously out of your mind, Isaac? What the hell are you doing here? He whispered, yelled, looking at me with a frown. I'm here to find you, I replied as if that was the simplest answer. Didn't I tell you I'd find you? Then why did you have to risk it, silly? He said, the anger still evident in his tone. Because I thought you didn't care enough to come back, I said sheepishly in my tiniest voice. But Aiden was still angry. If I didn't care enough, really, that's what you think. You silly, silly man, if only I hadn't cared enough, I would have never left my job and neither of us would be in this situation now. Wait, what? What do you mean? I asked, too confused to say anything else. 
I quit as your bodyguard because it was getting too much for me to be around you constantly and not being able to tell you how I felt for you. It was wrong of me. I couldn't mix business with emotions, so I left. But did Aiden just say he had feelings for me? Wait, you're saying you liked me? I said, still not able to believe it. I am saying I love you, silly. I have loved you for years, so much so that I couldn't take it and had to drop that job that meant everything to me and had to rely on some shady means to get my family going. He was overwhelmed by everything he was feeling, and it seemed he was even relieved in a way as he let it all out. But then why... why did you betray me? I couldn't help but ask. I didn't have a choice, Isaac. My father, they threatened me. His voice got quieter as he just looked down. Just like that was all clear to me. How stupid I had been. Of course he was forced into this, because there was no way he would betray me like this. His father was the only family he had left. Obviously he did it for him. I am so sorry, I said, cupping his hands in my hands, as he now had tears in his eyes. I wanted to warn you. I even got close to your house, but they got to my father first. I am so sorry. It's all my fault, he said, his beautiful eyes turning sadder than ever. I wanted to take that sadness away, so I did what I thought the best as I softly crashed my lips on his. He was shocked at first, but soon enough kissed me back. It's not your fault, I whispered as we broke the kiss, my forehead still leaning against his. I love you, Isaac, more than you'll ever know, he said in his softest tones. I love you too, Aiden. At that moment, I didn't care if I got caught again. I was finally happy. A few weeks later... We had just landed at the airport. I was nervous yet excited as Aiden stood by my side holding my hand. We were here to see Aiden's dad. He had sent him here in a hurry to save him from the goons. I had just surprised him with the tickets last week and he couldn't be happier. If you are wondering what happened to the gang, well, my dad was finally successful in catching them and they were now going through the court proceedings. Thankfully, Aiden was safe and I was able to convince my dad of how he was the one who saved me in all this. I guess having the commissioner of police as your father does have its perks. The nerves were actually getting to me. I mean, meeting Aiden's dad was a big deal, right? Don't worry, he'll love you, Aiden said, squeezing my hand in the taxi. Yeah, let's hope so. Hey dad, this is my boyfriend Isaac, Aiden said as I stood in front of his father to shake his hand. Oh my god, you're the infamous Isaac, Aiden talks so much about you. I smiled at him masking how my brain couldn't process what just happened. Did Aiden just introduce me to his father as his boyfriend? I mean, we were not exclusive yet, but this got to mean something, right? Make yourselves at home. I'll just get you both something to drink, his father said as he left us to ourselves. Boyfriend, huh? I asked Aiden as soon as his father was out of earshot. He just grinned as he said, I thought it's about time I finally asked you out, silly. Go ahead, I'd like to see you try. By the way, calling me silly isn't the best way to go about it, I teased him. That's because you're my silly. So tell me, silly, would you like to be my boyfriend? He asked, giggling like a teenage girl. Instead of actually answering him, I just put my lips on his. I guess that was the only answer he was looking for. Conclusion The rest of the days with Aiden's father went well. He seemed to really like me as he wouldn't stop talking about me to Aiden. Since the gang was finally arrested, we brought him back home. As for me, I finally had my savior back in my life. Well, not just my savior. He was my safe place, my calm in the chaotic world, and I couldn't ask for anything better than losing myself in those soft, dark eyes for the rest of my life. The end. Would you be able to forgive someone's betrayal for love? Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our Rainbow Force. And stay wholesome.